I only have one question for Gareth Southgate. One simple question in and amongst all the criticism England are facing following the draw against Denmark. I only have one question for Gareth Southgate if I was allowed to ask him this. How do you expect to win football matches? Now, I get it. It's easy for me as an armchair expert, as a supporter of football, to comment on something which I'm just seeing on TV. I'm not seeing the building blocks that goes into how England are trying to implement their style. But I'm not a fool. And in the same vein, if Southgate was flying out the blocks, we was playing exciting football, I would be praising him. I just want to know how you win, how you plan on winning a football match. You know, respectfully to Denmark, you know, they're a good footballing nation. Everything they did on the football pitch was in contrast to what England in a negative light failed to do so big up Denmark but with the greatest of respect how do you expect to win a football game how do you expect to go to the final of the Euros and if not one better than the last time we was in it if you're getting outplayed by Denmark and in several ways against Serbia in the first game the Euros has been very exciting we've seen great goals we've seen upsets we've seen just fantastic tempos of the game it's been a fantastic poster boy of the sport we all love of football England have done their best to F it up really and truly and the two England games have you know been filled with more negatives than positives. Now, I have never managed a high-pressure game, much less at international level, much less in an international tournament like Gareth Southgate. So again, I speak with respect, but how do you expect to win a football game? Football's a simple game. It's so simple, it's complex, and it's so complex, it's simple in many regards. One plus one doesn't always equal two. But the funny thing about football is, if I just say random managers, Sir Alex Ferguson, Arsene Wenger, Conte, Pep Guardiola, you know, you're probably thinking where I'm going with that. They all look at football different ways. But what's the common den denominator? To win a football match, you need to keep balls out the back of your net and you need to put balls in the back of your opposition's net. Games are won and lost in defence. It's played in the middle. Now, you look across all those three sections of, our, of I'm about to say, Arsenal, of England's eleven. Where is there any positives? There's a great amount amongst players. You know, there's a great amount, sorry, of players. You know, there's some fantastic players out there. But why do they all look rubbish? Of course, the players have to take responsibility. But it's due to the system or lack of. Now, I'm not naive. There clearly is a way of playing with England or a way they're trying to implement. But it's not abundantly clear. So something is going wrong. So I have to ask the question, Gareth Southgate, it's not club football where you're working with the players day in, day out, you know. So what have you been working on in the build-up to this? Because we can't press, defending from the front in the modern day we can barely defend you know Pickford's quite good in goal but he you know he can't save us forever and Gurr he's done all right but naturally you're going to revert to type when we're shambolic defending goes to simply more than the defenders we don't press in a coordinated manner we can't defend extremely well and we're not known for that in midfield we're shambolic really it's like that lad that has all the designers all the Rolexes but he just makes the clothes look crap what is going on now Trent Alexander-Arnold in midfield the experiment is not working I understand giving Giving it, giving it another goal, but it's not working. There's a reason Trent Alexander-Arnold is a world-class right-back. Stop pigeonholing people in. Now, if we take the two games that England have played and assume that, you know, let's just say the Premier League season started and Trent was playing in midfield for Liverpool, I have no doubt there'll still be these question marks, but he'd look a lot better. Why? Because there's a system at Liverpool. Yes, they've got a new manager. When you don't have a system and a way of playing, and again, you can probably throw a blanket over England's team because there's hardly any movement, you know, you make Trent redundant you know Trent is a quality player but in terms of being a midfielder there's more to that than just Diags but even if you assume okay let Trent Alexander-Arnold hit these Diags if there's no forward thinking movement or no runners then Trent's greatest strength is already redundant Jude Bellingham is left to his own devices Declan Rice that's the worst I've seen him play and fortunately it was for England and not Arsenal you know but again Phil Foden's playing on the left but in the pockets why are these players not standing out why are these players not working together at some point yes the players have to take responsibility but also, if everybody's not shining, it's down to Gareth Southgate. You've got some great players, but as you know, it takes more than that to win a football match. So if you've got Trent out there, Declan Rice out there, Bellingham, folding, inverting, and they're all to their own devices. If you've got Saka on the island, if you've got Harry Kane that's come out and said they're unsure of how exactly how to press as a country, these are shambolic things and these are not bad players. These are experienced individuals. Now, I do accept... Trent, I'm sorry, Southgate, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But why have you got young Wharton and, and, and Mayno on the bench? You know, if you think Trent's got qualities in midfield that complement what you want to do a lot better, that's fair enough. But we're not seeing it. Surely you need to try something else, which is throwing the young Mayno in there, throwing, you know, Wharton in there or something else that I haven't alluded to. You coming out and saying we miss uh, Calvin Phillips 
is a shambolic sort of statement to make and one that I believe is made by someone that's either feeling no pressure by the, his superiors or know he's on his way out, essentially, or knows he signed a new deal. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can't press, can't defend, shambolic in midfield, you know, Again, a team is a reflection of the manager. Southgate, by nature, is a conservative coach. So naturally, when you've got these exciting attackers, they're already crippled. There has to be a coincidence. In the last two games, I actually feel England, the initial periods of the match, have actually started very well. Once the first goal goes in, they revert back to type. You this has to be a reflection on the manager, essentially, you know, from the lineup to the individuals. It makes no sense. Now, I can't talk on players that are not there. And, you know, granted, there's injuries, there's loss of form. Really and truly, you know, Messi could have played yesterday for England and he still would have looked shambolic because we are crap at this moment in time. But... You know, I would understand if he was playing Reese James in Trent Alexander Arnold's role, is it because I think Reese James is more suited to that? I think Marcus Rashford is a massive miss, and then you're not trusting the players on the bench, even the players that came off the bench. You know, you know they started well for about thirty seconds, and again they reverted back to type. You wouldn't know who started, you wouldn't know who's played. These lot collectively all play for big clubs and all have relative levels of experience. Essentially, this is a good bunch of players. Do I have any confidence against the Germans, the French, the Spanish? I 100% no, but there's a lot more to give than England are going. When you look at the pressing stats, when you look at the midfield forward passing stat, you know, it's a shambolic sort of thing. Every player has limitations. You've left Declan Rice, you know, Declan Rice in terms of build-up play isn't the best. You've left him to his own devices. Trent Alexander-Arnold looks unsure of how to link up with his teammates, not, not, not to mention when he's receiving the ball. You know, Jude Bellingham is trying to do everything where ultimately you're doing nothing. Folding, I think it was a better performance than the one against Serbia, but he's left to his own devices. Saka it is what it is in that regard. Kane is on his own and there's an imbalance. Kane is dropping into midfield. Apart from when Jude Bellingham makes that forward run, it's, 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 it's nonsense really and truly. It's like nobody understands individually what's demanded of them and how that ties into the collective. So again, it goes back to the first thing I said at the start of this. How do you plan on winning a football game? You cannot defend properly. And again, defending goals from the front. Build-up play is redundant. You know, it's slow. It's one-sided. There's not a lot of passes to really play. You've got to look at the Spanish and the Italians in the game after England obviously drew with Denmark. Every man in possession, whether it's the goalie, the defender, whatever, they had three options. They probably had two forward options and they could go backwards. Sometimes backwards isn't the worst thing. England, it's either there's no one making movements or everybody's next to each other. And that's not to mention it's lifeless, it's stale. There's no invention, there's no intention. It's ridiculous. And I'm not exactly filled with optimism for the future because what is England's DNA? Who is going to be the next manager? And in my 29 years, the craziest thing is this is probably the best I've actually seen England in terms of getting to latter stages of com uh, of competitions. But if you've if I've in my 29 years seen Lampard, Rooney, Skulls, Ashley Cole, Sol Campbell, insert quality England player from them times there in um, people into the video and whatnot. And then you look at the Foldens, the Bellinghams, the Sackers, the Mainos on paper, the Sanchos, the Rashfords, you know... Uh, Wharton and every up Folden, Palmer, all of these guys, none of these guys are going to thrive in this really and truly. One minute was copying the Brazilians, then we're copying the Spanish, then we're copying the Italians, and then ultimately we're getting nothing. So I have to beg the question, what the hell has Gareth Southgate been doing in the months building up to this? To say that you miss Calvin Phillips and you ain't got a partner, and how many games has he started actually in tournaments as well of recent when we've got there? It's a shambolic, it's, it's shambolic. Find solutions and not excuses. The fortunate thing is it's all to play for. You can go through. It's a big if. If we do win the Euros, no one cares. This is just a dark cloud in a rainy, a dark cloud, sorry, in a sunny campaign. But it's atrocious, really. And these players are going to be crippled. You know, these are good players, but you're not finding a system that thrives to their, you know, that makes them thrive and plays to their strengths and hides their weaknesses. You know, if I'm saying Folden, Bellingham, Saka, you know, Declan Rice, the boys that come off the bench, Harry Kane. If none of these guys are thriving or looking anything close to what they look like for their clubs or, or, or a couple percentages to that, it is crazy. To come into this tournament and say you're you're experimenting is atrocious. To come into it with a first with a new first choice defensive partnership in Stones and obviously um and obviously Gurhi have done all right is atrocious. There's issues at left back with Trippier and a half fit Luke Shaw. You're praying to God nothing happens to Kyle Walker. And then you know what what is there to be positive about?
It's absolutely ridiculous. And the people that are the decision makers at the FA need to take a long, hard look at themselves. You know, a result of us changing and developing young players, forward thinking players is what you see with these young boys that have come through the system and are involved now. But you're play, you know, you're killing them. You're killing their hopes of getting through to competitions latter stages. Your the work is essentially in vain. So yeah, I can't. I, because we knew this was going to happen, but nonetheless, it doesn't make it any more disappointing. Say, as I said, one question.